All right, so we got a brief introduction to the law of reflection uh, in the last video, and now we're going to expand that out and try to think about how uh, light moves when we're around a mirror. Uh, when we look at mirrors, uh, things get a little more complicated. We've got three different kinds of mirrors. We have a converging mirror, uh, which converges incoming rays like this. Uh, and then we have a diverging mirror, so rays go into it and bounce off uh, in other directions. So I'd, again, at any given point here, the law of reflection is true, right? The normal of my surface here is going to be between there. Uh, and same over here, this normal of my surface is right here. Um, and so that law of reflection is working in each of those places, but because the normal of the surface changes, uh, those rays reflect in different ways. We can define a curved mirror as, uh, by its radius of curvature. And what does that mean? Well, it, notice it is not the same as f, OK? Uh, these, these are two different things. The radius of curvature is if I made this a circle, right? if I kept curving around like this, it would make a circle at some point. Uh, and the radius of curvature is the distance from your surface to the center of that circle, which tells us here, if it's got a small radius of curvature, is twice our focal length. Okay, so our focal length is the point where all of our rays are going to go through. Our radius of curvature of this mirror then would be about right here. Okay, so our circle would go about like that. The power of a mirror is defined by the inverse of its focal length. So let's think a second about what that means. If I move this focal length out here, right, then my mirror is going to be flatter, okay, because all these rays are going to be, instead of bouncing inward, they're going to bounce kind of out here. And then if I inverse that, right, if my F is big, then my power is small. So that makes sense. The closer we are to a flat mirror, the more we would say that is not a powerful mirror. The more our focal length is down here and all those rays are converging very quickly, we would call that a, a powerful mirror. Okay? And that those rules apply to both um, your, uh, your diverging mirrors and your converging mirrors. Right? So if I had a focal length here, that would mean my rays were diverging uh, quite a bit. If I had a focal length way out there, they would be diverging, but only a little bit. So a bunch of terms here to remember, converging mirrors, diverging mirrors, radius of curvature R, focal length F, and power P. And those are all related, but they're not the same things. Uh, and that focal length uh, can also be negative, right, for a diverging mirror. So it's, what does that mean? It means it's behind your mirror. Every mirror forms an image at a particular location. Uh, and these images can be real or virtual. Um, a real image can be projected, uh, while a virtual image can only be observed. So let's look at a flat mirror here. Um, from this point here, all of the, you know, I have, so I, this is kind of hard to get your head around sometimes. Why, why is a ray coming from here? Well, it's because light is coming from a light or a lamp or the sun or something, and it bounces off here. Um, and it bounces off in all sorts of different directions, right? Um, well, this is bouncing here, okay? Uh, and it can head in these two different directions and come hit your eye. Well, what you, when we decide where the image is, we want to know where those two rays converge again, okay? And you might say, well, they're not going to converge, right? They're moving apart from each other, and they are, right? As they bounce off the mirror, they've continued to move farther away from each other. But when we look at it on a sort of a, <laughs> a much uh, uh, enlarged picture here, they're diverging this way. But if we follow that divergence back, we can see that they actually converge again. Uh, and where they converge is the place where our image is. And that's why this is called a virtual image, because it's not at, those rays aren't actually converging at a certain place. Um, but they go back through the mirror and converge. And that's where we see them. 
So this is a virtual image. Uh, and when you look in the mirror, it looks like there's another bottle over here, right? As we'll see later, um, so the reason this can't be projected, right, is that these rays are diverging. But if you have a, a converging mirror or a certain kind of lens, you can get those to converge uh, and actually make another image. So virtual image is behind our mirror. Uh, a real image will be in front of the mirror. All flat mirrors uh, create virtual images. And then we sort of covered that. So the real and virtual is a little bit hard to get your head around. But remember that if, if you have a real image, you could put a screen there and it would show up. Obviously, if we put a screen behind our mirror, uh, you're not going to get an image there. Okay, the actual form of the image, that is how far away it is from the surface uh, and how high it is, uh, depend on the mirror itself and where the object is. So that focal length f as well as the d naught, which is our um, uh, the our d object, um, where our how far our object is from the mirror. And we can figure this out by doing what we've already started to do here, which is called ray tracing. Uh, and that means I take a, a point where light is bouncing off something, and I follow the rays. And I can follow them uh, by the following the law of reflection here. Okay. Um, to figure out uh, where those rays are going to go. If we do these rays here, right, if I, we can do some trigonometric proofs, I won't make you do that, um, that would show that this distance is the same as this distance. It's based on our, we have a rule of reflection, and then we would know our angles. We could follow these lines backwards, and basically we could find that in that flat mirror, we always have a virtual image that is as far away from the mirror uh, as the object is from the mirror. So how do we do rule tracing in more complex situations? Uh, we have three main rules, and two of them are basically the same. One is a ray that approaches parallel will go through the focal length. So all of these parallel rays are bouncing back and going through our focal point. Okay. When we look at a diverging ray, we're not there because they're diverging, that focal point is behind here, and so we're looking at the extended uh, part of that ray, right? So it bounces off here, but if we follow these all back here, uh, a parallel ray will diverge as if it were coming from that focal point. Uh, a ray that approaches through the focal point goes back parallel. So this is just the inverse of one. So if I have a let ray that's coming in here, it's going to bounce off parallel. If I have a ray that comes in here, it's going to bounce off parallel. And if, again, if I have a ray that's approaching that fo focal length here, it too is going to bounce off parallel with the diverging ray. And then finally, a ray that hits the center of the mirror will follow the rule of reflection. So if you hit that directly on, it will reflect directly back. But if I have a ray that goes here, it's going to follow the rule of reflection and bounce off here. Similarly, if I have one that goes in this way, it's going to bounce off that way. So those are our three rules. And those, you can pretty much figure out any situation following those three rules. But do make sure you keep uh, radius of curvature separate from focal length. Because uh, all of these rules have to do with the focal length and not the radius of curvature. Okay, let's look at an example of, um, of a converging mirror here. So here's our object. You can tell by the sub uh, script O. Um, if I ray trace, right, I've got one ray here. It's coming in parallel, so I know it's going to go through the focal length. Boom, I can follow it out that way. This one here is hitting the center of the mirror, so I know it's going to follow the law of reflection. I can follow that out there. This ray here goes through the focal length, and so it's going to bounce off parallel. And so I can actually find the place where those rays converge. 
and that gives me my image here. So what have we learned by doing this ray tracing? We've learned that this mirror is going to invert the image, right? When we project that image, it will be um, it will be upside down. Uh, and we've also learned that it's going to be magnified. Uh, and it's going to be far, look like it's farther away from the mirror. So ray tracing gives us some sense of the form and placement of that image. We can do some math here to figure out what those things are too. So we have some uh, equations for mirrors. If we know DO, which is the distance of our object from the mirror, which we usually know, and you usually know the focal length too, um, then we can figure out what our DI is by this inverse law. Uh, and we can also find our magnification. So our magnification is going to be the relationship. This is the definition of magnification, right? HI is bigger than HO. Okay, the image is bigger than the object. That means it's magnified. But it's also going to be the negative of DI over DO. So this is actually, these can be, bigger or smaller than one, but they can also be negative or positive. A positive magnification means it's not inverted. A negative magnification means that it is inverted. So here, this is negative HI, right? It's a negative number. This is a positive number here. And so our magnification would be negative, say, two, right? Bigger than one, but negative because it's inverted. And those uh, equations hold for all sorts of different